My name is Alexander McCobin. I'm 24 years old. And what are you doing right now to make the world a better place? I am one of the founders and executive director of an organization called Students for Liberty. It's a 501c3 nonprofit run by students and for students dedicated to liberty. Um, so what kind of work do you do with that, and what are some of the projects you're working on? Our goal is to help students by identifying, networking, training, and resourcing students who are interested in making the world a freer place, which includes everything from running conferences for students to attend, providing them with handbooks on how to organize on campus, and connecting them with other opportunities and individuals who are able to support them in their efforts to create a freer society. And how did you get involved uh, with, you know, with the idea to start Students for Liberty? It all began with, for myself when I was a student at the University of Pennsylvania for undergrad, and for the first two years I was on campus, there was no pro-liberty student organization. I felt isolated and alone and nearly gave up on my beliefs because I thought I was the only one with them. But at the start of my junior year, I began the Penn Libertarian Association to see if there were other students out there like me. And lo and behold, there were just a few students, but a lot of students and professors and other individuals who had the same beliefs as me. So going into my senior year, I wanted to expand this idea and find out and help students on other schools who were in a similar situation as myself before I started the Penn Libertarians. So I got together with a few friends who also ran pro-liberty clubs in other schools and we decided to put on a one-time conference for pro-liberty students from the Northeast to get together and just talk about best practices for student groups. But the idea began to snowball, and by the time we held the first conference, we actually had 100 students from 42 schools in three countries, and we realized by the end of it that we couldn't let this just be a one-time event. We needed to turn this into a nonprofit with year-round resources for pro-liberty students who wanted to make a difference in the world. Cool. Was there a, a moment maybe that served as inspiration or was it kind of a gradual thing that you just got fed up and wanted to see if there were other, other students like you? It was very gradual. At each stage in the process, it was really an effort to just t tackle one issue that was before me or before the organization. At first, it was just me wanting to find other students on campus and then it was just an interest in making my group better and helping students on other campuses start their own clubs. And then after the first conference, it was just create an organization with limited resources. And by continually just addressing individual problems as we saw them, we've managed to build up an organization that has over 400 student groups in the network on over 11 countries and is making a difference every day. What are some of the ways that you kind of work across traditional boundaries with, uh, with what you do? And that can be anything that kind of society says, you know, this is what you should, you should stay in this sphere and do this, and you can't, you know, blend education with politics or something like that. What are some ways you work across that? Well, for us in being pro-liberty, we're directly trying to challenge the left-right spectrum of the political sphere, where we want students to know you don't have to only be on either the political left or the political right. There is an alternative where you can be both socially liberal and fiscally conservative and stand up for liberty for all people in all aspects of their lives. And in doing so, our entire philosophy is premised on the idea that students, young people, are able to change the world. They don't have, we don't have to rely on traditional leaders in society, people who are generally older or who have certain levels of education, but rather young people just through their passion and their dedication to changing the world are able to actually make a difference. What are some of the challenges you see facing young people today, our gener facing our generation? Um, you want to be any more specific since there are quite a few. <laughs> Go for your top ones. I, I mean, in general, I think it's very widely accepted that the older generations have let us down. We're being burdened with an incredible national debt. Most entitlement programs are unsustainable in the long run. The, there are lots of biases ingrained in the governmental system that prohibit social freedoms in ways that our generation isn't generally willing to put up with. It's really going to be up to young people to just make a difference by educating other people about what freedom means and how we can actually work together to construct a freer society instead of simply taking the system as given to us by the older generations. And you're someone who, you know, kind of wanted to see, you know, at college, 
um, to find a community. What advice do you have for another young person who wants to get more involved in their community or youth mobilization or the political process? I mean, I know you started a club, but maybe more, a little more specifically, what advice would you tell them? Aside from getting involved with Students for Liberty? <laughs> <laughs> um, aside from, honestly, getting involved in Students for Liberty, going to a conference or accessing our resources to start up a group because we're here to just help students engage in the sort of community building and activism that they want to do. It is all about just going out there, finding other people with similar ideas and being willing to take risks. Try to start an organization, try to start, a, try to start some sort of effort to um, change something on campus. Let other people know that you exist and try to find other people who are like you.